Hi. So, how many times have you had a really good idea, but you didn't have any money to actually make it happen? Uh, uh, yeah, a few hands definitely out there in the audience for that. So, all of us have these ideas from time to time. Uh, ideas that we're really passionate about. Ideas that can help us create something that didn't previously exist. Ideas that might be able to completely change an entire industry or a field. And so, I had one of these ideas five years ago. I didn't have any money, but I knew that I had a lot of gumption and I wanted to make it happen anyway. And so I got really creative and want to tell you about this story of how I made my idea actually happen. And so my name is Kevin Winchell, and as you can tell, I love democracy. <laughs> Absolutely love democracy. Um, I love the idea that everyone gets a voice. I love the idea that everyone gets to participate in the process. And perhaps most of all, I love the idea that, especially at our local level, our democracy is filled with individuals who are from local communities and who really want to make a really big difference and change in their local communities. They're really passionate and they're committed citizens. Um, but in order to get elected to a position of local, uh, uh, local elected office, you often have to get elected first. And so in order to get elected, you have to do things like go to town hall meetings or go to big campaign rallies or get lots of bumper stickers or yard signs or raise a lot of money or have issue briefings. You do a lot of shaking hands and you kiss some babies and make sure you don't shake the babies and kiss the hands. That won't get you elected. Um, so anyways, you're doing all these sorts of things and it's also deeply ingrained in our democracy, in our American uh, institutions here, and so understood and so expected whenever election years come around every two years that uh, it's really surprising then that for something that's so pervasive and so parodied that we actually um, don't know much about how these campaigns are actually run. And so I encountered this problem firsthand back in 2010. In April of that year, at the tender age of 25 years old, I was actually uh, elected to a position of uh, leadership with a local political party. Um, so I knew that there was a major election coming up later that year, and I wanted to make sure that I knew everything I possibly could about how to prepare for that election cycle. And so, like any young person, I thought to myself, well, there's probably some secret room somewhere, uh, some back room uh, with large mahogany tables and some consultants who come in and they teach you everything that you need to know. They've got their uh, fancy suits on, their briefcases, and you go there and they tell you all the secrets about how to raise a million dollars with a single Facebook post or how to convert even the most antagonistic citizens to your cause and get them to not only uh, volunteer for you but contribute to your campaign and things like that. And so I went around and asked all of my friends, uh, my colleagues, you know, so when's the training going to be? I want to make sure that I can be there. Ma mark it off on my uh, Outlook calendar and on my planner and everywhere. Write it on my Palm Pilot. That's my Palm Pilot. Um, write it down there so I can make sure I can be at the conference or, or the training. And, and what did they tell me? They said, Kevin, the heck are you talking about? There is no training. Uh, we don't have any sort of trainings like that. So, uh, with slight shock, uh, I then continued my search online. And I decided, like any young person again, uh, when you have a question online, you Google it. So I Googled everything I could possibly think of. Uh, how to run a political campaign, running for local elected office, uh, uh, managing, uh, uh, campaigns and elections and those sorts of things. And so basically, if, whatever you name, I, I probably Googled it. And amidst all of this Googling, uh, I actually found that there weren't any solid hits whatsoever in the entire Central Florida area. Uh, there were no opportunities whatsoever uh, in my area for me to learn about this thing that I was really passionate about. And that's really surprising for me, considering that Central Florida is largely considered to be one of the electoral battlegrounds for the entire country. So, again, at this point, my shock started to turn to uh, dismay. And uh, the best results I could find were actually uh, looking at across the country. For the low, low price of $595, you could go to a, a conference up in Washington, D.C. and learn from some of those uh, uh, national political consultants. 
Um, but, of course, that's $595. Or if you were a member of one political party and wanted to go into the Midwest, uh, you could go to this uh, partisan conference and learn about everything. Or if you were one of 12 people selected for something that over 1,000 people applied to, you could attend a six-week uh, conference in Virginia where you learned about political campaign management. But overall, the main takeaway was that there was absolutely nothing in the entire country that I could attend to learn about political campaign management in a way that was free and nonpartisan and open to the public. So this is really, really where my shock uh, turned to despair. Um, so as a political science undergraduate, um, you know, I might have been a little idealistic, but there was a certain assumption that I had. And I assumed that as soon as I left the friendly confines of my alma mater, that there would be this sort of civic infrastructure ready to embrace me with open arms of patriotism and citizenship. <laughs> uh, ready there right when I stepped outside of those friendly confines to just give me a big hug of uh, community engagement and everything. <laughs> And so uh, that, that really wasn't the case. Uh, and I was really surprised because I thought that the adults would have done this already. I, I thought that uh, this is something that would have already been created out there that someone would have thought of and would have ran forward with. Um, but it just really wasn't the case. And, and I thought maybe, well, maybe they just didn't market it to me the right way. M maybe that um, they do have this created, but they put it in the local penny saver classifieds or something like that, um, because that's where older people tend to put things about notices and everything. So, so I, I looked in there, too, and there wasn't anything in there. So I figured, OK, well, um, this stinks. So one month later, we're in the month of May. And as any Floridian knows, May is the month where you tend to start to have to mow your lawn every week. That's me mowing my lawn. Uh, and yes, that's a rotary lawnmower. You're welcome. Uh, so, uh, so May is the month where you have to start mowing your lawn once a week. And you know, I, I'll be honest with you, I do some of my best thinking when I'm mindlessly maneuvering my mower. And so I'm out there, and I start thinking to myself, what about political campaign, campaign management? Uh, what do I really need to know? What are those essential components to it? And so I, I started to think to myself, while the sun is shining down on my body, this other sort of light started illuminating in my mind in the form of an epiphany. Why don't I just create my own political campaign management conference? That's uh, an actual shot from the moment that I realized it. Luckily, my wife was there with a camera ready to capture it. Um, <laughs> Coincidence, I think not. <laughs> so with each question, I realized that I may not have the actual answers to those questions, but I typically knew someone who could answer those questions for me. Uh, I knew people who were data experts and who were field operatives and those sorts of things. And so I figured that I could probably call on them to help make this happen. And so really, sometimes the most effective answer to a question is the most simple especially if it's a really complicated question, like um, where do I learn about these sor sorts of things? And so why not just create this sort of conference myself? So at this moment, Politics 101 was born. Politics 101 is a free one-day crash course on political campaign management that brings together citizens, uh, activists, aspiring elected officials, candidates, and uh, different civic organizations all together so they can learn from each other in this community of citizens who are very curious and committed and excited about democracy. So creating the conference didn't happen just like that. Uh, in fact, there were a number of barriers that I anticipated when we were trying to make this happen. Um, the first was trying to find a venue. Uh, luckily, I happened to work at an institution that uh, placed a strong value on civic engagement and especially gave staff a lot of autonomy to help pursue these sorts of things. So uh, luckily, I was able to find a venue that was large enough to support a uh, conference that we wanted to have, but also free enough to have on a budget of zero dollars. Um, so venue, I was able to take care of that. So the next problem or, or challenge that I anticipated was being able to find people to help me run the conference and people to help uh, present these different topics. And uh, thankfully, uh, I had enough contacts in my personal and professional networks that I could start to leverage those and uh, get people to actually show up and uh, present on these different topics. They were uh, people who had expertise in different areas. So third was being able to actually get people to show up. Um, 
as we know with any sort of conference, the trick is always trying to get a good crowd and getting good attendance. And so um, I knew that I needed to make sure that we got a good crowd to make it worth our presenter's while, but I needed to do so in a way that was free because I didn't have a budget. So uh, I went to um, post lots of different classifieds online or in uh, local newspapers that are all free. Uh, I posted things on social media. I put out uh, emails to different listservs of targeted groups who I knew would be interested. And I did all those sorts of things in ways to micro-target my audience and make sure that I was reaching them where they were at. And again, all of that was done for free. All of the marketing was done for free. Um, the last problem that I anticipated was the actual budget. And so money doesn't grow on trees, and I didn't have a whole bunch of $20 bills like that, but, um, but I certainly knew that there would probably be some expenses that I'd have to incur, because conferences cost money, right? I mean, if you're putting together a conference that's bringing together experts in their fields from all across Central Florida, and you're trying to have over 100 people show up and learn this stuff, there's probably going to be some expenses that are incurred. So, I mean, what do you think this, something like this would cost? Maybe $5,000? No. Uh, $1,000? Didn't cost that. Uh, $500? No. It didn't even cost us $100. In fact, the amount that it cost us was about $50. Um, so the presenters were free, the venue was free, the marketing was free. The only thing that we actually spent any money on was a few of the uh, professors and I put together about 50 bucks and we bought some drinks and soda and we put it in this cooler right here. <laughs> so that's how you have a conference on a budget of less than $50. Um, going into the day of the conference, we weren't sure what we were going to expect. Um, we knew that we were trying something new that people hadn't done before, but we were really optimistic and we felt uh, strongly enough, and we sort of made a bet on this. We didn't bet the bank, we just bet $50, but we made a bet that if we built it, they would come. And so on August 28, 2010, over 100 citizens, uh, aspiring elected officials, candidates, and uh, civic, uh, civic groups in the DeLand area came out and actually attended our very first Politics 101 conference. Um, we were really excited because we were able to present workshop topics such as acquiring and analyzing voter data, developing a campaign strategy, message and media development, putting together a campaign organization, volunteer organization, using social media to mobilize and educate voters, making the ask for money and endorsements, and even best practices for get out the vote programs. So our conference got graduates have gone on to run successful campaigns for public office. Our conference has grown in reputation, uh, so we've been able to attract uh, political consultants from anywhere from up in Tallahassee to Orlando to South Florida to even Jacksonville who have come to present at this conference for free. Um, I mentioned that we've had many uh, people who have gone for elected office who have graduated from our program and gone on to win their respective campaigns. And um, we've even presented Politics 101 to colleges and universities across the country in order to show them this can be a best practice for institutionalizing civic engagement at their institutions. Um, we even expand to, uh, plan to expand Politics 101 to multiple sites in the Central Florida area. Um, we, right now it's situated in Volusia County on the eastern part of the I-4 corridor, but we intend to expand it both to Orlando and then over to the west coast of Florida in the Tampa-St. Pete area. And so we're really excited about that opportunity and by having it in the Tampa-St. Pete area, we'll be able to actually um, have the conference spanning the entire I-4 corridor, uh, that political epicenter of the entire country, so to speak. Um, which is a really great opportunity for us. Um, so looking forward to uh, making that happen, um, we know that there are a lot of uh, challenges that are associated with that. Um, but looking at all of this, um, <clears throat> let's see, we know that sometimes you can't wait for the adults to make something happen. Because um, if you're waiting for the adults to make something happen, sometimes it's not actually going to happen. Um, and so there are three lessons that I want to really uh, help make sure that you all take away from this. The first is that um, I want you to know that you can do this too. Um, you can take your passion and you can turn it into practice. 
And you might be driven by a question like I was. I was asking about political campaigning, but your question might be something like social entrepreneurism, or online journalism, or medical technology. And so you can easily create a conference like this yourselves and put that together around one central question, bring in experts and make it all happen. Um, the second lesson I want you to take away is that this doesn't cost money to do. I mean, granted, you might spend about $50 or so on some drinks, something like that, but really you don't need a lot of money to make this happen. And so don't let money get in the way of making your good idea come true. Um, all you really need is just uh, a group of speakers who are able to come and present on it. You need a venue and you need to market it and all of those opportunities are available to you for free. Um, third is that I ask that you uh, take one lesson that you, can, you should share all the knowledge that you accumulate with others. Um, it could have been really easy for me to just call my friends when I had my question about political campaigning and ask my friends, uh, tell me everything you, need, you uh, know about political campaign management so that I can uh, take that knowledge and run with it myself. But instead, I think that there's a certain responsibility that we have as citizens in our local communities to not only take that knowledge and learn about it ourselves, but share it with other people. And so it's my hope that by doing this, we're able to uh, share this knowledge with multiple groups of people and really democratize knowledge in a way um, that's going to help improve our communities and increase our sense of citizenship uh, wherever we might be. And so I challenge you to use your relationships in order to build this sort of infrastructure yourselves. Uh, because when we share our knowledge, that's when true innovation can really take place. Um, so I hope that you go out and democratize your knowledge because uh, we are truly the ones we have been waiting for. Thank you.